After months of speculation, Logic 8 is finally here, and this video is designed to get you up and running with Logic and to show you some of the things that you'll find within the first hour of playing. The first window you'll come up against is this one, which shows you a range of templates to get started with work. You can either start with a blank, empty project, or choose from composition or production templates. If you choose from one of these, a series of instruments and effects will load ready to get you started immediately. Here you can see that there are templates for working with music for picture and various other things too. Selecting an empty project provides you the blank new arrange screen, which allows you immediately to choose a number of tracks, either audio or software instruments, designed to get you up and running immediately. So here I've selected a few audio tracks. I'm going to keep this open library button open, we'll come back to that in a moment, and then just click create. And immediately within the arrange page, we get our four audio tracks. As you can see, the interface has been completely redesigned for Logic 8, and this media browser here, which we'll return to in a little while, gives us access to the library of new content available with the program. Down at the bottom here, we've now got tabs as well, which allow us to open up particular windows. And over on the left, the mixer strip has been developed to show output routing as well as the currently selected track. Okay, so I'm going to open up four software instruments as well as the audio tracks keeping the open library button ticked and clicking create instantly gives me those four tracks. So if I come up to instrument number one in the previous version of Logic, Logic 7, in order to set up an instrument, it was necessary to drop down to the menu over here and simply select the instrument of choice. And you can still do that if you want to. And you can see that there's 5.1 surround support for some instruments as well. Alternatively, you can come up to the library um, tab in the media browser and search for sounds by instrument type. So for example, if I decide I want to select a drum kit, I can click on the drums and percussion tab, jump immediately into Ultrabeats kits and select one uh, from the extended list that appears within Logic 8. So if I select this kit here, immediately what happens is that the kit is set up and a channel strip of appropriate effects is set up for it as well. So if I decide I want to start programming for this kit, immediately I've got both sound and effects processing organized at a single click. So I can jump down to Ultrabeat and simply drag in the preset pattern for this particular kit and copy that to make a four bar loop. And let's have a listen to that. And there it is. You can see in the bottom left hand corner, the channel strip is set up here and next to it, the output routing is shown as well. So if I jump down to instrument two, I can start again. I can choose another type of sound and let's choose something here from this textures menu. And again, choosing a sound from here, if I click on the sound that I want, this time it's an EXS24 sound, again with a more extended channel strip routing as well. So I'm making decisions based on sound, and the great thing about this is it means I don't have to know which instruments produce which types of sounds. I can simply choose a sound from a category and assign it that way. So let's have a listen. So there's my recording which I've just put in using the caps lock keyboard and I can quantize it as ever. Quantize commands and things like that still exist up in the top left hand corner there. So what happens if I want to start introducing audio into my piece as well? Well as ever I can simply just click on the audio track I want to use and the media browser intelligently switches to show things that are relevant for audio tracks so rather than showing synthesizer presets for example I can either come into the audio bin and add an audio file of my choice or I can jump into the vastly extended loop browser there's an additional 40 odd gigabytes of content with Logic 8 which amalgamates a lot of the jam pack loops and sounds which have been released in recent months so if I jump into this vocal folder Here's a nice little vocal sample which I might want to use. Simply just drag that into uh, track number one and there it is incorporated. Now the great thing about the media browser is that it doesn't simply relate to adding content, sounds, and loops, and so on and so forth. If I click on the library button now, a whole series of folders of preset channel strips exist within here. So I can pick my effects routings directly from this library browser. If I come into here and I pick this warp voice thing, you can see straight away that I've got a huge uh, long chain of plugins any of which I can remove or bypass if I don't want to use them. 
So there's the sound through the plugins. And again, if I want to tweak anything, I can. I can copy this file as ever and simply open up the compressor, for example, and adjust the output volume. So now I've got my vocal sample incorporated into my piece as well. Why stop there? Audio track two. Uh, once again, jump into the loop browser, hit the reset button to jump back into all of the available sounds, choose something from another category, and of course the appropriate list will appear and you can audition and you're free to uh, incorporate anything you might like. So you can begin to see how quick it is to get going with your interest in instruments, loops, effects, Everything is very immediate. Let's add something else. Here's a nice little wind sample. And we'll bring that in too. So the next thing is to see how Apple have redesigned the interface concerning other windows. I can close the media browser. And double clicking on this audio file brings up the audio editor for this particular loop. Rather than this now being in a separate window, you can see that it's part of the main arrange page open via this tab down at the bottom. I can rescale this view, which keeps the arrange page exactly the same and simply scales the bottom view. And similarly, I might decide that I don't want to use the whole of this sample, but simply change its endpoint, which I can do within this window. If I click that button, it disappears. So I can tab into any of Logic's other screens. Here is the mixer window showing just the things that exist within the range page. Four tracks of audio, four instruments, and the output routing. And again, at the top of that screen, I have a chance to turn on or off the views of those particular things if I want to. So let's just close the mixer. Now, perhaps the nicest new effect within Logic is Delay Designer, which we can apply to this sound on track two. So you'll find it in the delay folder, as you might expect, and we'll select a stereo instance of uh, this particular plugin. And here it is. It looks a bit like Space Designer, as you might expect with the name. Now, this multi-tap delay allows me to set up multiple taps, each with independent feedback controls, filters, and so on and so forth. And you can see there's a long list of presets in different styles. So we'll choose one of these warp delays, these filter delays, and you can see each individual tap here in terms of its filter content. You begin to hear that warping away and doing some interesting things. We might choose a different setting. And there's something a little bit more standard, but still very nice. Also new. Uh, there are a few uh, sort of smaller effects, including a little effect here called the microphaser, which is a tiny little baby phaser, which allows you, again, to set up uh, sort of phase effects very uh, easily from three separate sliders. Let's have a listen. So that's now doing some nice things as well. What you'll also find within Logic is a lot of things are now driven from the menu. So if I hold down Control and adjust the endpoint, I've got a whole menu of things now that I can um, select and choose from. So rather than having to jump up to menus and select um, individual edit techniques, I can simply do it uh, with a click of the mouse and a hold of a key. So lots of parameters are much more accessible. Let's check our mix. Okay, let's transpose this second instance of this audio file up a tone. And now we've got the beginnings of something we could go on and expand. And of course, it's not just audio editing, which we can do from within the arrange window now. It's also possible to edit MIDI notes. So if we take one of our sequences, this first drum part, for example, and double click on it, the piano roll display at the bottom here can be rescaled. And of course, within here, I can copy notes, drag them around, anything I like. There's an extra note at the end. So this video is just concentrated on Logic's arrange page, the new uh, graphic display with the media browser up here in the top right hand corner, the tabs along the bottom, which allow you to jump into any editing window you might like, and the mixer strip over on the left-hand side, which basically means that most functions can be carried out directly now from the Arrange page in Logic 8.